we are focusing on the e-commerce fulfillment market. The size of the market is in the ballpark of $250 billion. And in the last seven years, the annual growth is 25%. Uh, we signed with the top leaders at single picking operation at United States for the first uh, our installation site. Uh, it will be at the end of this year. And in 2019, we will be complete the second installation with one of the top five uh, companies at logistics uh, fulfillment uh, operation that has more than five million square meters. So um, we think we validate our idea with the top players, and we're still do doing this. And now we have an issue that any startup has at this also this issue, it's time. Um, so Earth is giving us uh, 24 hours a day, so we are already working 24 hours, 24 hours a day, five days a week. And um, we still want to squeeze the timeline. So Guy Levy took the full responsibility of the Gazebo project. And now we'll show you um, how we are using the steel, what is this tool, uh, what is the tool doing, and what are the benefits, and how we are using this each day and enjoying these benefits. So thank you guys, and good luck. Okay, so I'll talk about Gazebo. Uh, Gazebo is a 3D dynamic simulator for uh, robotics and that enables us to uh, simulate robots in a, in a physical uh, environment, uh, in a common <coughs> environment, with uh, multiple robots. So uh, this is a brief about the Gazebo. I'll show a sh few short videos of the uh, Kata. <laughs> This is from uh, a live demo in uh, Shanghai that we did for uh, four days. So uh, this is our public robot uh, picking the uh, box. So we have one big public robot and uh, multiple uh, robots like this uh, going around in the aisle. And we have a small robot uh, that uh, can uh, pick only from the first floor. We'll see it in a minute. Oh, okay, you hear me? Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so this is the live demo from uh, Shanghai, and uh, I'll show the. Okay. <coughs> this is our small robot that can pick from the first floor, and uh, he's a lot faster. And so, both robots we can have. If we have a big warehouse, so we have, we can have hundreds of robots like this and like the big one, uh, collaborating together, uh, taking goods from the warehouse and out of the warehouse to the picking station. Um, uh, all is autonomous. Show a short video of highlights of Gazebo, just uh, so you have the feel what can we achieve using Gazebo. Um, you have uh, some info on the side. This is all Gazebo. All it's a YouTube video. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, okay. So this is a YouTube video of uh, Gazebo highlights. Really, in, in any field of robotics, you can use Gazebo to do your work. Um, okay, why Gazebo? Why, why do we need a simulator? And why specifically Gazebo? Because there are other simulators. Um, so, fast algorithm development. Um, with Gazebo, we don't need to wait for uh, hardware, for manufacturing, wait for, uh, wait for the hardware to be ready. We can just simulate our robot, we can take the cut files, 
simulate a robot and run it in a physical environment uh, that simulates friction, forces, masses, inertias, everything in a really accurate, dynamic environment. So we can go with the uh, software development faster and we don't need to wait for the hardware to be ready. <coughs> Fast prototyping. Again, we can design uh, a new uh, hardware feature, like uh, for us, if we design a new gripper for the robot. We don't need to uh, send it to the manufacturing, get it back, have another revision. We can just plug it into the gazebo <coughs> environment and try it. Just try it and really fast. So uh, fast prototyping is a really uh, good thing. Run test. We can have deterministic, deterministic tests in a, in a physical environment. We can run tests over and over and over again the same test with the same environment. Uh, we don't need to drag the robot around, put it in the start place, send it again, just run the test in the gazebo environment, uh, just save time. Uh, again, physical engine, the gazebo simulates a real world. Uh, so we can have very complex environments. Uh, we can have friction, we can have masses, inertias, Forces, moments, everything is simulated in the environment. It's an ODE engine and very accurate and uh, efficient. Sensor integration. We can insert cameras, lidars, uh, any sensor you can dream of. We can have it in the gazebo environment. You'll see later how we do it. Uh, ROS integration. We develop in ROS, so gazebo is the right choice for us because there's a very uh, strong relation between ROS and Gazebo. Uh, there are packages that communicate in between the ROS environment and the Gazebo simulator, so it's very easy to run the same code you run on, on your real robots with the simulator environment. Uh, it's open source, so there's a community, so people uh, contribute to the community, and you can take stuff you need and contribute yourself. So uh, you can have a uh, a lot of stuff that you don't need to do from scratch. Um, I'll show a little, little bit about the uh, robot in joint state. Uh, th this is our robot in the, showing in Arviz. Arviz is the, like a GUI for us. You can visualize stuff. So uh, this is a robot, and these are the moves that uh, you, can, you can do with our robot. Uh, two uh, motorized wheels at the front two caster wheels at the back, lift that can go up to three and something meters, and gripper that can take from both sides, so you can rotate it, and uh, you'll see the torque going out, taking a in, going back inside. Um, we define a coordinate system for each uh, link or for each joint in the system, and uh, we can easily have the forward kinematics of the robot and of the links. So I can know if I put a side camera here on the gripper and I want to know the relation between the side camera and the base link, I can easily know it and uh, it helps us a lot in uh, doing stuff accurate. So this is all the moves of our robot. And how do we create a robot in the Gazebo environment? <coughs> First thing to do is take our CAD model, if it's SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD, uh, CAD environment, and we want to bring it to the Gazebo environment and keep all the masses, inertias, the center of mass, uh, everything, so we'll have uh, the most accurate simulator we can have. So this is the first, this is the first thing to do. Uh, Gazebo works with, uh, UDF files or SACO files or SDF files. Um, it's just a, a framework to, to, to uh, configure a robot. Uh, collision and visual models. Uh, Gazebo defined a few models for a robot. Visual model is what you see. Collision model is the models that Gazebo do the calculations of collisions uh, and 
other uh, uh, <coughs> physical uh, uh, physical calculation. That so is importance of weights and the balance. And the yes. Yeah. Yes. Everything is accurate and modeled. So this is the visual model of a robot, and this is the collision model of a robot. So collision model, because we want to re reduce computation and ease on gazebo, we do the collision model simple. So it's just uh, really simple shapes, like um, boxes or uh, round spheres. And uh, it's easier for gazebo to calculate the collision if you have a few robots in an environment mm -hmm. and you want to know the collision between a robot and a box or or a shell, so uh, we, we make it uh, we make it simple. You can look on the paper side. We did we, we have uh, more details because it's the important stuff here. We want to know how we take the box and uh, all that. So here more details. Here it's a lot simpler, just a convex hull of the of the robot. Uh, we can add sensors. Uh, here you can see our small robot with spoke with spoke over here. Uh, the blue thing is a LiDAR scan. Uh, LiDAR is uh, like um, a laser scanner in 2D, so just a slice, slice of uh, scanning. And you can see when the uh, LiDAR is uh, colliding with the shelf, you won't see the, the rays. So uh, with that, we can do navigation, we can have a map of the environment, uh, collision avoidance, lots of stuff. And here, you can see the camera of the robot. This is the camera view. At the moment, uh, you can see here a QR code uh, on the flow uh, that helps the robot navigate and uh, localize itself in the warehouse. So uh, lots of QR codes over here, you can see. And the robot uh, localizes itself using uh, those stickers. We can add plugins. So we have the Gazibo API open. We can write our own stuff. Uh, plugin for uh, make the light uh, green. It's possible, everything is possible. Just use the API, write your own plugins. Uh, very useful. Uh, the last thing to do is build a Gazebo world. You saw the shelves and everything. Uh, just uh, depends on your application, but you can build uh, any world you want, and uh, you can define the properties of the world. You can define the friction of the ground, and you can define the, how strong the sun is. So everything is possible. Everything uh, is in your hands to uh, to model. Um, this is a robot you see driving around. This is what we do uh, in Kaha uh, with our robot, like you saw in the demo. We do the same stuff in the environment uh, of Gazebo. Uh, we work on. We focus mainly now on the. Um, driving control and how the robot localizes itself. Uh, so you see it going around a bit, um, taking the lift up, rotating the gripper. Uh, so this is really just like the uh, just the same code that we run in the real robot. Same in the gazebo environment. Um, lift this up, taking turns, going in the aisles. Um, if you really we can do a lot of tests like this, and uh, and finally, when we're ready, we can go to the real robot and uh, know that everything is quite the same results. Um, that's it. Questions? I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, uh, about the accuracy of the simulation. So uh, there is a physics accuracy that is, for example, if you have this machine which is uh, uh, quite heavy, it can have an inertia, so it can be, in real world, it can be hard to stop it when it is moving. And uh, what about the simulator as, as example? So how accurate is the physics? Uh, it is accurate. If you take the CAD model with all materials uh, defined properly, you can take center of masses, inertia matrices, everything, everything, everything from the CAD model, just uh, convert it into Gazebo files, uh, URDF or SACRO or SDF. What, what about sensor accuracy? So for also example, in real everything world, is in depends the, on you. In real world, you have noisy sensing. You can define noise, Gaussian noise, whatever you want. I see. Okay, so 
So it just depends on you. Everything is open. You can model everything very accurate. You will get very similar results. My second question. Uh, I've heard about uh, OpenAI Gene. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a somewhat uh, similar uh, in the in Spirit Simulator <coughs> by OpenAI for uh, software training. Okay. So uh, do you aware of this simulator and uh, if yes, can you compare that? Uh, no, uh, actually I was only with Gazibo because of the, mainly because of the bus connection. Uh, so. Yes? Well, um, does Gazebo work with the car manufacturing robot, robots that manufacture cars? The road, like the, the, the arm. <coughs> yes, uh, the Apic and Place, there is another uh, simulator called Movit. It. It's mainly for arms and uh, arms manipulators and the um, indoor kinematics of arms. You can uh, you can uh, uh, work together with guys. And, and uh, what? And second question: What com What What are the made the What company use Gazebo? What? Uh, not sure, but a lot of companies, I guess. Not sure. So, so you, can simu you can simulate the amount of load, for example, for example, Amazon would have, <coughs> fulfillment would have, their warehouses would have. You can simulate how, or how, what the robots would have to do. Let's say we are doing something for Amazon. Would you be able to? You can simulate all the, uh, for all the specification. For example, the Amazon warehouse. Would you can simulate yeah, sure. stuff they would have to. Sure. Sure. In a specific point, you'll need uh, some uh, computation power, but yes, everything is possible. Multiple robots, complex environments. What results uh, are you expecting to to get from a simulation? When building one, what what? Model <laughs> well, it's not a perfect model, and if you tune a um, controller or PID controller, I don't know, you will have some differences, but uh, you get quite similar results. And uh, in terms of uh, collisions, other other results. Yes, yes. Many yeah, collisions. Collision, yes. Regarding the RVs uh, that you showed in the beginning, um, so well, first of all, uh, when did you when do you decide to visualize an RVs and how how easy to how easy is it to take the model that you made for Gazebo and, and uh, visualize the RVs? The same model, okay. the same. Uh, Rose have a package that called the description, just a description of a robot. If you do it well, uh, you will have. Uh, a good description of your robot, all joints, links, <coughs> everything in the environment. You'll see the same thing, but always is only visualization. Yeah, you cannot uh, do physical stuff. Yeah, I know. Or yeah. So it's, but it's, it's, it's just it's really the same file. Yeah. Okay. The same description file. Yeah. Thanks. Is there, is there a market for a, like a uh, component that can be bought? Algorithms, components, that's the, that's the uh, it's open source. You have a community, for example, um, if you want to put a camera in your model, just go to the Gazebo website and uh, look for the uh, camera uh, plugin. Like for commercial companies that provide support or uh, like a, a custom made of model <coughs> or whatever? Um, well, okay. uh, yeah, sure. We asked a couple of weeks ago to RSRF, the Open Social Money Foundation. And if you're interested, some of you said they are actually doing some specific work if you need. They take some, uh, so the one of the business models is by taking specific work for companies or people that need some plugins or support, and they will do it for you for, uh, for a price. What, 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 what was the name? Yeah, OSRF, Open oh, Source sorry. Robotic Foundation. Uh, so they will do it. It's a, can I ask a non-technical question? Sure. Uh, so, uh, as someone that kind of, I'm guessing you are fairly familiar with Bronx and Gazebo and these different tools, in Israel, is there much demand for that kind of stuff? Are there people that say, you know, we need someone that knows Gazebo? Uh, 
Some sensors, for example, they probably back objects and uh, specific materials. And I'm, sh I'm pretty sure there will be some problems for that. But otherwise, it's fine. I would suggest to continue the, the, the questions. Uh, yeah, thank you very much.